let's be real. If there was one thing none of us expected to see, it would be Margot Robbie dressed well on a red carpet. And yet, in the year 2023, we are all drastically shocked by the stark difference in Robbie's style, and it was all thanks to one singular icon, Barbie Millicent Mother. Roberts. Yes, as Margot Robbie launched the Greta Gerwig and Mattel-backed film Barbie about the iconic doll that has become a global smash success, she changed not only her stylist but her style as she adopted the idea of quote method dressing, which has an actor utilize their wardrobe choices outside of the film set in order to tell a story about the film and simultaneously build hype for it by centering their aesthetic choices around the film's premise and even costume design. And Margot Robbie, alongside her cast members like Ryan Gosling, Simu Liu, and Issa Rae all built hype for the film through this. I am not a Barbie girl living in a Barbie world. I'm not fantastic. I'm not plastic yet. So much so I wouldn't have even seen the film had it not been for Margot Robbie dedicating herself to the role on the red carpet, which I respect and recognize took work, planning, and moving outside of her comfort zone style-wise. It's made me ease up on the idea of going to see it eventually. So with that, let's explore the Barbie tour looks. Now while I'd love to start at the red carpet, I think the first place we really saw Margot Robbie dive into the role of Barbie through the lens of fashion was on the cover of American Vogue's June 2023 issue. I have it here. I'm not going to read it, but I have it. The stark image of Margot Robbie in a bright pink custom Versace dress with 3D floral applique placed sparingly around the bust, hips, and straps was radically different from not only what Margot Robbie had been wearing, in the past, but when coupled with the bright pink background and icy blue font color was totally different for American Vogue as well. I mean, I think we all know that American Vogue is not the most exciting horse in the Condé Nast stable. Many would rather look at the British, Italian, Arabian, Indian, or Singaporean titles for more exciting and enduring covers than the commercial American version. But for the first time in a long time, it seemed that Vogue has actually loosened the reins a bit and allowed itself to be the platform for this initial Barbie core launch of Margot Robbie. And so I say, American Vogue, thank you. Please do this more often. I beg of you. While I still think the pose of Robbie on the cover is strange due to the way it causes the front of the dress to pucker onto itself, mostly because of Robbie's bending forward, I still think it's a great way for both to stand out. And as we move through the shoe, we can see that there are not only Barbie pink styles, but rather subtle nods to the structure of Barbie dolls themselves. Two different photographs showcase Barbie stepping off of her stand, which for the actual Barbie dolls that often can't stand up by themselves, holds them together. The first shows Robbie in a pink and black polka dot ruche gown from Valentino's Fall 2023 Old Couture Collection, which has a very 1980s feeling to it. And in this shot, she stands on a black pedestal with black leather opera gloves and black pumps in a pose you would associate with a Barbie doll. The other is Robbie standing on the same black pedestal, this time wearing a purple silk bell-shaped gown with an exposed black tulle underneath the skirt's hem and covering the bust area. This is from Carolina Herrera's Fall 2023 collection, and it's one of the most striking from that particular show, so I'm happy it's getting the airtime it deserves. But besides that, we can see that Robbie is wearing a pair of black Paris, Texas heels, with one conveniently sitting off the pedestal, but her foot staying in that classic Barbie tippy-toe pose. And when we add in the ruler that she leans against, it's obvious to see that Margot and Vogue are setting her up to look like one of the beautiful figurines that sits above one's bed perfectly posed behind her plastic cage. Free Barbie. And it's a fun idea, and it's great to see Vogue playing along with it. Now, as for references to Barbie's wardrobe, this shoot really doesn't have much direct reflection except for little things like silhouette or motif that were common among Barbie dolls. But none are actually recreations of past Barbie doll looks. How do you know this? Well, I have looked through the Barbie's Collector's Guide website for quite some time and cannot find a direct reference to any of these looks. Which, to be honest, makes kind of a lot of sense. A lot of the shoot doesn't actually have direct references because Vogue had to pull from the existing catalog of designs that were seen on the Fall 2023 and Spring 2023 Haute Couture runways because they had to appease advertisers and designers probably wouldn't have made custom looks for the shoot in case the styles didn't make it into the spread for one reason or another. But while there is no thread for thread reference, References, the stylist for the shoot, Gabriella Karifa Johnson, did an immaculate job at showcasing how the latest seasons could at least somewhat take on a Barbie aesthetic. A Saint Laurent by Anthony Vaccarello multi-pinstripe skirt suit 
obviously touches on a Barbie's corporate clothing choices over the decades, with her brick cell phone perfectly working with the 1980s power shoulder and patent black pump. While some of Barbie's more out there work, like Western Barbie, who debuted in 1980 and again in 2001, was recreated in a Martin Margiela style of red shirt with white fringe that had been sutured together with a blue and white gingham top in upcycled fashion. While a metallic foil draped dress by Proenza Schooler was paired with an astronaut helmet to pay homage to the Barbie Miss Astronaut doll that launched in 1965. Certain things cannot be avoided, like Margot Robbie's ties to Chanel, which have hounded her red carpet status for years now. And as we can see, a pink tweed Chanel haute couture dress with frayed sleeve hems and box pleat skirt exists. It's not that the dress is bad, it's just by far the least intriguing look of the whole shoot. And I think we know why, I don't have to say it, I do have to say that it has nothing to do with Margot or Barbie. But onto lighter Barbie memories, we can see that Margot recreated the roller skating Barbie that was originally launched in 1980, but with a Miu Miu knit set in green that had 3D faux flower appliques all around. Again, we can see that Vogue smartly in their set design is setting us to interpret Margot as a real life Barbie by putting a set of potted flowers towering over her to only enhance this miniaturized feeling. The last look from the shoot we'll discuss is the combination of a polka dot morning top and striped Norma Kamali swim briefs, which remixed the original Barbie dolls fashion from 1959. When Ruth Handler launched Barbie back in the late 1950s, the first iteration of Barbie saw her in a black and white striped strapless swimsuit, which we can obviously see has been tapped into with the briefs on Robbie. But the polka dot top adds a new and subtle layer to this usually black and white image of the Obey original Barbie. After the Vogue shoot, the stage was set, because now Robbie had to continue on this notion of not only being Barbie on camera, but also in real life to continue to promote the film. Well, she didn't really have to do it, but she did it, and I think that's what's so great about this whole experience. The first time we saw her out on the open road as the leggy blonde doll was when she wore a gingham Prada look at CinemaCon. We first saw a pink and white gingham jacket that was paired with, of course, black sunglasses, but also a pink Safiano leather mini bag to boot. I mean, Barbie has got to have her accessories, right? As her jacket came off though, we could see that a matching crop top and skirt were placed underneath, which exposed the ideal Barbie fashion we often think of. But there is a bit of intrigue on this look's background. Now many would assume that this gingham is from a Prada women's wear collection, but rather it stems from the brand's spring 2023 men's wear collection, which was titled Choice. We can see that the coat is actually from that collection, but the crop top with black squiggle detail across the bust and the mini skirt are custom versions of tops and jackets seen throughout the collection. For Barbie's first launch in terms of looks to be fashions adopted from a menswear collection is rather funny, but I also wonder if it's because deep down Barbie's history as a doll that showcased that girls could be like their boy counterparts and could have toys that reflected their ability to have careers and jobs and not just be stuck inside of the home as a caregiver or a cleaner might have something to do with it. The other element of the Prada collection that's so interesting is that the collection was titled Choice, as mentioned earlier, and Muta Prada and Raph Simmons, the brand's creative directors, spoke about how the idea of choosing clothing is much more complicated than we often think. Muta Prada was quoted as saying, a coat, jeans, a suit. They appear simple, but are the result of a process of choice. There are hundreds of coats. Why is this the right one? It is a combination of a long process of design and decision, and then of instinct. It is a matter of style. And Raph Simmons added, the garments are classic, but their mix contradicts, making them exciting and new. Now, while these comments wouldn't be about Barbie, I can't help but notice that for children that play with Barbies and the many options and ways to style her, there are a lot of choices. She can be anything she likes and her fashion choices depend on how much money one has. I mean, we can see her in Diane von Furstenberg, Tommy Hilfiger, Guo Pei, Balmain, and more. And she draws on current pop culture aesthetics and societal norms, but yet to each individual owner of a Barbie doll, she is different and a mix of these contradictions. This look is also a subtle Barbie reference too, which is something we see more and more of as we move through these looks. But in this instance, we can see that a 1973 quick curl Barbie has a long pink and white gingham gown with sheer sleeves and a black neck and sleeve detail, which shows how aptly Robbie is sticking to the Barbie script, but making it her own too. Then we saw Margot wear Valentino to a photo call in Beverly Hills. I mean, it wasn't exactly Malibu Barbie, but it was close enough. 
The dress is a pink halter style with a crisscross drape around the neck and a stomach cutout. And it features white polka dots that run throughout it, which is meant to be a more exciting take on a motif that is a Barbie staple. The look is based on a more recent Barbie called the Pink and Fabulous Barbie, but I think Margot's version is far more pink and far more fabulous, to be honest. I mean, Margot's so on top of her referencing that she wore a yellow handbag from Valentino's Spring 2020 Ready to Wear collection that perfectly matches Barbie's own bag, which is bright yellow and quilted as well. Pulling from the archive is always appreciated here at Hot La Mode, and when there is referencing on referencing on referencing, it's like a delicate tiered cake that I can't help but want to dig into. And that's why when you see that Margot's custom dress is actually a recreation of a vintage Valentino look from the Spring 1993 collection, you have to add another slice of cake to your plate. The original Valentino dress was pretty similar to the Barbie version, except its base color was a deep burgundy, and the skirt was a lot longer, which is really striking, and I wish it had been the same for Robbie, but I also think the shorter skirt is much more on brand for our fantastic Miss Plastic Barbie. There's also the fun tidbit that the model who wore the original style, Karen Mulder, was actually considered the Barbie of the runways back in the 1990s, only further sprinkling the meaning into the look. And to be fair, as much as Margot is playing her part, I also have to shout out her stylist, Andrew McCormick. Kamal. The name might not be super familiar, as Mukamal isn't a huge fashion stylist star just yet, even though he's already styled Zoe Kravitz and Billie Eilish in the past. But for those that love a bit of fashion reality TV, you may remember him from the hit show Kel on Earth as a hopeful in the fashion PR world. And well, hope no more because Mukamal has come out of the gate swinging when it comes to Margot Robbie. This is an era of Margot Robbie fashion I can get behind. I mean, it's a relief to not have to title this video, Margot Robbie, fire your stylist, because I mean, not even I want to have to do that. I will do it, but I don't want to have to. Now, another fun vintage style emerged when Margot was at the airport, and I mean, airport fashion has been pretty dusty these past couple of years, but this might be the Swiffer needed to make it a little bit of a shinier fashion moment once again. The look is Chanel, but luckily it's vintage. Don't worry, I wouldn't do that to you all, and neither would Margot apparently now either. The look is a vintage spring 1996 ready to wear style that was perfectly recreated and gives me hope that one day Chanel can look like that again. Hope, you know, sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not. The look is made up of a pink and yellow tweed jacket with the brand's signature four pockets, but actually has lapels, which strays from the usual collarless jacket we know Chanel tweed skirt suits to encompass. But that makes sense as there is also a pair of light beige trousers that are paired with a black leather belt and a silver buckle that is embossed with the Chanel double C logo. The beige and black two-tone slingbacks are the same as well, but the look differs in Robbie's use of a white crop t-shirt instead of full-length v-neck. A lack of black and gold chain belt and a black quilted Chanel bag, which does not appear to have been skewered by a cane as the runway version does. Honestly, I think the cane skewering is unnecessary, so I shall allow Margot's version. While there is no reference to Barbie, it's still turning a look at the airport, which is radical these days, and it's vintage Chanel cosplay, which I don't complain about either. But there does seem to be an undercurrent of wearing looks that have been modeled by tall, leggy blondes on the runway, and this time it was Claudia Schiffer. Are Robbie and Mukamal trying to tap into the IRL Barbie? While in her native Australia though, Barbie steps out of her status quo pink and into a black and white striped dress by none other than Hervé Leger. Now the dress is obviously a reference to the iconic inaugural Barbie doll, which was launched on March 5th, 1959, in what is described as a zebra print black and white striped bustier swimsuit. Now the swimsuit design is really interesting, not because it's actually interesting. I mean, anyone can do stripes, but why choose that style? What about the swimsuit design would have been appealing to young girls in the 1950s. Well, the design didn't seem to be necessarily about being appealing to the buyer's taste, but rather it was intended to make sure it looked good on television, which at the time of launch was largely watched in a black and white fashion. So the swimsuit was designed for marketing purposes, not to be the sole defining look of the Barbie brand. But as for the Hervé Leger dress that Margot Robbie wore, well, that one was also designed for marketing purposes, but the effect was to make sure she looked great. And while I won't say it's my favorite look of the press tour, it certainly is one that has a strong connection to both Barbie and and the brand Hervé Leger. Now Hervé Leger is not just a name but an actual designer who began working in the fashion industry around 1981, after he met Karl Lagerfeld who brought him on to design clothing with him at brands like Chloe, Fendi, and Chanel. Leger had experience actually designing swimsuits. Odd, isn't it? And when he saw some discarded fabric strips at a factory, 
He liked the idea of placing them next to each other to create a full dress. These bands would be knit, which gave them not only stretch, but also the ability to stick to the body, and they would become known as the bandage dress. In a fun way, it's cool that Hervé Leger, now designed by Michel Ox, could go back to its roots and also pull a bit of inspiration from Barbie's roots as well, efficiently placing these historical strips together to create something that sticks itself tightly to Margot Robbie. I also can't help but love the small detail that Hervé, Robbie, and Mukamal all follow the shift in stripage at the bust area. It's just those subtle little details that only further propel how good this press tour is fashion-wise. Margot then had two more Versace looks in perfect pink, Barbie's specific references, but rather tapping into the history of Versace, which was just so delicious. The first look we see is a pink chainmail dress, which the Versace brand has labeled Oraton, as Gianni Versace turned the chainmail into clothing in 1982. Gianni, ever the developer and fashion-forward thinker, realized that the chainmail he had used for a men's collection was too heavy, and so with a German artisan, he recreated the chainmail. He did it through these little minuscule rings of brass alloy, which are usually seen in the staple silver styles, and then also aluminum alloy for parts that needed to be colored. Now, the particular dress that Robbie wears is, of course, Oraton and was from the fall 1994 Atelier Versace collection, which on the runway was worn by Brandy Quinones. To the after party for the show was worn by, you guessed it, Claudia Schiffer. Yeah, note the Schiffer referencing once again. The dress fit Margot perfectly, and like Schiffer and Quinones, she pulled it off so well, while also being a totally believable Barbie core fit. The other Versace look that we saw was from the fall 1994 Ready to Wear collection, which was originally worn by Kate Moss, and consisted of a knit turtleneck sweater with sequins embellished throughout, giving the top a bit of shimmer and shine as it hit the runway. As for the skirt, it's a metallic pink with box pleats that starts right around the pelvic area, and many critics at the time thought it was a reference to Andre Courage's futuristic work. As for Margot's recreation of the look, which like the previous look is becoming more and more of a Versace marketing tactic, we can see in an up-close photo of Robbie that the sweater doesn't have the clear sequins to make it shine, but everything else lines up perfectly with the original, even down to the purple socks and white Versace loafer pumps. The original look was also featured in a very iconic Versace ad campaign from 1994, where it featured models like Nadja Auerman, Cindy Crawford, Stephanie Seymour, Chrissy Charlington, and of course you guessed it, Claudia Schiffer. Although, Chrissy Turlington is the one wearing Margot's look. Regardless, I live for the Versace history lesson Robbie and Mukamal are giving us as part of the Barbie packaging. Now, while pink was the dominant color throughout the whole press tour, it wasn't the only one we saw. A short intermission in the bubblegum tone gave us a look that might be a bit of a stretch in terms of my explanation, but I think it makes sense. The dress we saw Robbie in next was a Moschino creation from the spring 2019 collection, which relied heavily on coloring and doodling for inspiration. The coloring and doodling of Yves Saint Laurent, to be exact, who actually did have a collection of Barbies marking his iconic designs launch in 2018. Now, the collection revolves heavily around the sketches of the late YSL and how he would shade in his sketches with colorful markers, and so a lot of the looks take on those motifs. One of the sketches also has a little strawberry sketch design, which is what Margot is wearing. And I can't help but think about all the Barbie coloring books I saw as a child at the grocery store or bookstore and wonder if Mukamal and Robbie are playing on that element of the Barbie brand. Considering the Barbie coloring books have been around since at least the 1960s, they are quite a big part of the brand and something that has been around almost as long as Barbie. So why not play on that angle as well? There's also the added element that in 1998, Barbie had two different strawberry themed outfits. One was a simple white dress with crystals and large printed strawberries in red floating around it, while the other was the strawberry sorbet Barbie and had a large pink gown with pink strawberry print. Between the strawberry and the coloring book history of Barbie, it's a rather intriguing mix of the two, even if it wasn't intended to be. When the Barbie movie premiered in Seoul, South Korea, we got a twofer, as I like to call it, as in a twofer one. Robbie and Mukamal dreamed up a day to night look for this leg of the tour, which actually coincided with the 1984 day to night Barbie. This Barbie would start her day as a working woman of the 1980s and of course a pink skirt suit with jacket having white lapels, a pencil skirt, and of course accessorizing with a straw hat with pink and white polka dot scarf wrapped around it, a pink chiffon scarf around her neck, and briefcase, and weirdly enough, handheld calculator. I don't know, the 80s were weird. Now, Robbie followed this outfit almost to the T, and it was all thanks to Versace's ability to dive into the period and recreate the look without it looking totally costumey. She had a boater hat with the same polka dot band, a 
perfect pink jacket with subtle power shoulder and white detailing with a pencil skirt to match and heels in white with pink toes. The look differed with Margot holding a pink crystal embellished 1980s brick cell phone which plays into the working Barbie element and instead of the briefcase which today would feel a little bit clunky it was switched out for a Versace La Medusa mini bag in a matching pink. But like the day to night Barbie there was a second outfit that had to be transformed into and again it perfectly recreated the Barbie version. The look is still by Versace and is a dress with pink or a ton bodice that has the Medusa head medallions on the straps while it has a pink chiffon skirt that ties at the waist like a sash and then layers chiffon strips that slowly fade away exposing the pencil skirt underneath. The Barbie day to night commercial explains how Margot's look mirrors the night element of the original doll as when Barbie's blazer and scarf are removed her sparkly bodice is exposed and her pencil skirt can be flipped inside out in order to showcase the chiffon skirt. It's a really fun and entertaining way to play on another trope of Barbie, in that she is a multifaceted doll that showed that girls and young women were able to have a serious job and work while still looking fashionable for the time, and then could transition themselves into a drop-dead gorgeous gown if their hearts so desired. While I might not love the night version of the look, to be completely honest, even though I commend Robbie, Mukamal, and Versace for making the style in their own image from both Barbie and Versace's house codes, I think it's yet another way for Robbie to show that she isn't letting the usual run-of-the-mill fashions expected for a celebrity promoting a film to be the status quo. There's something really special about honoring the history of the subject of the film with thought, care, consideration, which is so rarely done these days, even if I think the skirt on the dress is a little sloppy. And as the Barbie honoring continued, we saw a little bit more of a toned down statement, but one that still kept advancing the plot. Margot appeared in a pink three-piece set consisting of a collarless jacket, a mini skirt, and crop top with an asymmetrical neckline, and all three were covered in clear crystals materializing in a diamond pattern. The look is actually from the Moschino Spring 2015 collection, one that is still to this day heavily beloved and is literally the perfect wardrobe choice for Margot. Jeremy Scott, then creative director of Moschino, showcased a stunning pink Barbie themed array for his sophomore collection. After the McDonald's themed collection the season before, this idea of Jeremy Scott playing on pop culture was cemented when he sent out his own versions of Barbies in their roller skating and crystal iterations. It has lived on as one of Jeremy Scott's best collections ever and is a legacy of Franco Moschino's own work in fashion that often made fun of and capitalized off of the industry it joked about. Margot's look in particular is based on one of the runway looks, with the crop top added in and a heart-shaped quilted bag with crystals also attached following the runway example. The look also seems to be a reference to Sparkling Barbie from 1964, with her light pink silk bell dress, of course, with small rhinestones in that diamond motif also present. To be honest, Robbie and Mukamal could have leaned so heavily on this Moschino collection that I'm kind of shocked there was only one look from it, and it was this one. It's not exactly razzle-dazzle considering the source material, but I do think it shows that the duo refused to take the easy way out, and for that, I have to commend them once again. We then saw Margot in a Bottega Veneta look, this time a look from the brand's fall 2023 collection, which was made up of blue jeans, a white tank top, and pink button-down shirt, except all three pieces are made up of leather. Yes, I said leather. L-E-A-T-H-E-R. I almost forgot how to spell leather. Mathieu Blasey, the creative director of Bottega Veneta, since his first season at the brand has been bamboozling everybody by sending out these styles that look just like denim jeans, wool sweaters, and even cotton button-down shirts, except they're all treated leather to appear to look like their original designs. Bottega Veneta has always been a brand that focuses on the craftsmanship of leather, and so Blasey's idea to turn leather clothing into not just pants or coats that look to obviously be leather made makes the clothing feel a little bit more functional and utilitarian for your everyday life. Price is not for your everyday life, but the clothing most definitely could be. And so to see Margot Robbie rock an all-leather ensemble for Barbie looks a lot more casual than one would expect, and I think that's very cool. It's also worth noting that Barbie has worn jeans and pink tops throughout her time as a doll, so it's really not something out of the ordinary for her either. And following that look up was another style that is taken straight off of the earring magic Barbie. Some of these names. I get it, but like, earring magic Barbie? Earring Magic Barbie was launched in 1992 if you needed to know. Earring Magic Barbie is well all about her earrings. Obviously, they're magical. And they're made up of big silver hoops that hold dangly stars and hearts on chains below them and a matching chain belt. I do wish the earrings were a lot bigger because the size of Barbie's earrings are like stupid big, but I'm also happy that they didn't rip Margot Robbie's ears off, so I'll settle for this size. As for the dress that Margot Robbie wore and that Barbie also wore, I think Barbie was really still living in the glory days of the 1980s neon as she thought highlighter pink was a primary color. And I would say definitely feels a little 
dated, to be honest. Personally, I, I hate the dress, but to be fair to everyone involved, I hated the dress on Barbie too, so I shan't be mad at Margot and Mukamal. Blame Barbie. Or her costume designer. Next was a vintage moment from a brand we don't get to speak about often enough, and that was Emilio Pucci. Robbie and Mukamal opted for a bright Pucci printed dress made up of pink, purple, and yellow wisps that divided the dress in a manner similar to a stained glass window. The dress was cocktail length and had a slight frill at the hem, which only further Barbie-fied the whole look. And when adding in the pink heels by Manolo Blahnik and the bag and earrings by Chanel, it comes together to be a perfectly Pucci wardrobe for our iconic doll. The idea for this look actually stems from a 1992 totally hair Barbie who wears a similarly psychedelic dress with matching pink heels and big bow style earrings. I presume both Barbies are inspired by Emilio Pucci's designs which began as early as 1947 but by the 1950s and 1960s had become more mainstream-ish. They were often used for skiing purposes but then slowly also adapted into ready-to-wear styles and have moved in and out of popularity over time. It's a cute look, it's different, it's not what you expect from Barbie but like it is Barbie which I think is what's fun about this press tour. We're doing the gamut. We're running it. Barbie's a multifaceted woman and she doesn't need to just wear pink. And now we'll discuss one of the most radiant designs to grace this video, which is this strapless black Scaparelli gown that Margot wore to the LA premiere for the Barbie movie. Now this look is actually based on a 1960s Barbie called Solo in the Spotlight, which honestly has never felt like more of a me name or something anything. The 1960 Barbie wears a strapless shimmery dress with tulle flare skirt around the shin area and it also has a red rose appliqued on the left side. When we compare it to Margot's dress, Daniel Roseberry and Scaparelli did a great job modernizing the original style. The dress is fully sequined to meet the shimmer and shine of the original and has a tulle skirt that flares out almost horizontally which is really intriguing and I don't really know how they did it. And there is a hand-painted fabric rose in red that just perfectly encapsulates the attention to detail that Scaparelli as a brand has become known for over the past 90 years. The dress also is perfect because for Scaparelli's Spring 2022 Haute Couture collection, the brand showcased similar flared skirt dresses in the brand's signature black velvet, which only further enhances the history. And I'm gonna say kudos to McConnell and Robbie for even getting the black opera gloves with the pink scarf that was sewn onto the original Barbie doll's glove as just a perfect but subtle add-on. Attention to detail is important, people. We then saw Margot don a red dress by the British-based brand Delara Findicoglu, which was essentially a silk cocktail dress with a lot of corset details on the bodice. It's really not very impressive, but as far as construction goes, it's a pretty standard party dress that does seem to hike up as Robbie walks, but it is yet another Barbie historical reference. The dress is a take on Barbie's second iteration ever called the Barbie Bubble Cut, which saw Barbie move out of her zebra-striped bathing suit in favor of a red one in 1961. Listen, it's not the most radical of looks, and this one in particular by far is not, but once again, I think the simplicity and the referencing to the second Barbie style ever still shows how much care and detail Robbie and Mukamal have put into this press tour. As I spoke with a stylist friend recently about the tour, she mentioned how important even the looks like these are, even if they don't titillate like the others. This look, even if we don't love it, really can't be criticized too, too heavily. I mean, criticize whatever you want, but you know, we don't go overboard here, except for the slight fit issue go overboard there. Because of the origin of Barbie and the fact that Mukamal had planned and organized these looks' creations ahead of time. To be honest, fashion designers don't just whip up Barbie outfit recreations often, and sometimes this is a good thing because Barbie hasn't always been the most fashionable gal around. Sorry I said it, it's the truth. But in order to make these looks, considerable time and planning had to go into them in order to work with designers to bring these mini outfits to real life. Mukamal more than likely had to send concepts and sketches to these brands in order to really get them to recreate their lifelike versions of the doll ensembles, while other stylists prefer to take what a brand gives them and just have a tailor fit it to their client. Again, might not be amazing, but it's certainly thoughtful and I can respect this. The last look we'll discuss is what Margot Robbie wore to the London premiere of the film and it was a knockout. It also happened to be the last look of the tour due to the sag after strike that occurred the day after and has been ongoing, which I'd like to mention that I support wholeheartedly, not to get on my high horse, but for every millionaire celebrity there are, a lot that actually are working multiple jobs to make it in the industry and if they got to fight for what they need I'm with them. This is not a studio endorsed video. I already started it before the strike even began. It's just something that I wanted to do. That was a really cool press tour. Back to the non-union topics. 
This finale look for the tour was a brilliant and opulent way to close out what is one of the best press tours by a celebrity since Zendaya's Dune run. Now this look is a pink silk Vivian Westwood gown with the brand's signature corseted bustier and draped skirt with side train. It's the most extravagant we have seen Margot Robbie as she channeled Barbie, and that's because it was based on an early Barbie called the Enchanted Evening Barbie, which was launched in 1960 and was so popular that it was sold for three years, ending in 1963. The original Enchanted Evening Barbie had one noticeable difference, though being the first stole that Barbie had wrapped around her neck, because I'm unsure of whether or not it was real fur. I presume it would have been fake as fake fur had advanced far enough by the 1950s. Margot's version has a white tool that has been layered and manipulated to resemble the first stole, but it's noticeably tool. In today's day and age, it's probably better for Robbie to not court controversy with furs, either synthetic or organic, and stick with the tool option to be on the safe side. But besides from that, the fabric flower that has been recreated, which holds the side draped together, looks so lifelike and really is truly such a subtle but beautiful recreation of the original. And when you add in the gloves and the multi-strand pearl choker, it just sends the look into a stunning orbit. Now, besides from the obvious similarities between the original Barbie dress and signature techniques from the Vivian Westwood brand, there's also a little bit of history between VW and Barbie. Barbie actually tapped Westwood to create a Barbie back in 1998 called the Lifeball Barbie, which actually had a fundraising component built in. Lifeball is an organization based in Vienna, Austria, that did and still supports people affected with HIV and AIDS, which for both Barbie and Vivian Westwood back in 1998, to be fundraising for was rather radical. The Life Ball Barbie wears a black gown with draped bodice and skirt as well as long sleeves and what looks to be somewhat Renaissance inspired hair with conical spires shooting out of her head in nods to the historical double horned henin. There also happens to be a second Barbie and Westwood collaboration depicting Zendaya wearing a Vivian Westwood dress from the 2015 Oscars when her hair was publicly scrutinized by Juliana Rancic on Fashion Police. Now, this more than 20 year relationship with Barbie is apparent between the two brands and it's a rather cool way to cap off the press tour. Although if the studios would do right by the actors, we might've been able to see more looks. So you know who'd be mad at. I was very happy with the work and dedication that went into this press tour. Margot Robbie has obviously let herself be a little bit more loose fashion wise and it's a real joy to see and I hope to see her work with Andrew McConnell continue as it's a relationship that is obviously getting results. So I'd love to know what you guys thought of this whole press tour. Please let me know what your favorite look was or what your least favorite look was if you're that kind of girl. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you on the next one. So TTYL.